Welcome to Ulango, the best minutes of your day with Krista and Bill. My name's Krista and I'm an English teacher. I um, like to talk about different ways to improve your conversation skills. And also we'll be doing an immersion, English immersion trip coming up in the year ahead. So um, yeah, and I'd like to introduce my friend, Bill. Bill, how are you doing today? Very good, Krista, thank you very much. We just celebrated Independence Day here in the United States. So it was kind of a nice weekend of, of celebration. I am also an English as a second language teacher. I also write a newsletter about idioms and sayings called Winning English. Uh, but we enjoy getting together, Krista and I, and uh, sharing some ideas and sharing those ideas with you. We're going to start off a little series of videos here. It'll shape up over time how many it is on leadership styles. And this is Krista's brainchild. In other words, it was her good idea. So Krista, tell us what this leadership styles thing is all about and which one we're going to talk about today. Well, it's a massive topic where you've got, say, eight different leadership styles. We're going to be talking today about the democratic leadership style, which has about six different points to it. And of those, we'll be talking about. Um, so with the democratic leadership style, it's effective with knowledgeable employees, so people that know what it is that your business does, and they have a certain level of expertise in their field. So it's effective with them. Democratic leadership style also has a motivation component to it. And harmony, which is what we're going to be talking about today, um, and idioms used when you are creating harmony in the workplace. So that's a little bit about the democratic leadership style. You also allow people to lead and communication is important. Um, all of these are big factors in being a good leader. And there's other methods of leadership, uh, such as the autocratic leadership method, which is almost the opposite of the democratic leadership style. Right, Bill? Absolutely. Yeah. If you're confused at all about what a democratic leadership style is like in the workplace, I'm sure you know what the autocratic style is like. Autocracy, autocratic is do what you're told. Uh, you get the directions from your boss and you do that or you're out. So that is one person's opinion and everything happens around whatever that person decides. Democratic, much more trying to bring, as Krista said, bring a group together, use different approaches and techniques to bring a group together to achieve a common goal. So, and as you said, Krista, many features to this, right? Mm-hmm, a ton of aspects. And the one we're gonna focus on today is harmony. So creating harmony in the workplace, there are a number of idioms that you can use to help foster this group interaction and people getting along well with each other. And one of them is to get something out of your system. So you wanna encourage your employees to communicate with one another and to get something out of your system means to tell a certain aspect of what is going on with you that may be a little bit uncomfortable and get it out in the open for discussion to be able to um, move on from that difficult time. So there may be some tension and in order to alleviate that tension, you wanna encourage your employees to get it out of their system. Can you think of an example where you might want to encourage your employees to get something out of their system? Well, an example that I can think of 
from a workplace is, you know, suppose some new HR, human resources system was put in place and nobody likes it, right? <laughs> nobody likes the way this thing works. So everybody is getting kind of angry, right? They're getting mad, but it's the workplace, right? You don't just go around yelling things, right? And complaining. So you hold it in. And that system in the idiom is like your emotional system. And it's, it's bottled up like a bottle. And, and it's all in there and it can't be let out. And then your boss comes along and says, you know what? I think everyone needs to get something out of their system. Let's have an open meeting today where you can talk about your problems with this new human resources system. And maybe that anger can dissipate a little bit. So mm -hmm. that's how I can see someone using that phrase to describe this process of harmony building in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I can think of another example where I had two employees that were uh, having some conflict and there just wasn't good communication. So in order to create that harmony, we sat down, the three of us, and we had a discussion. And I said, hey, you need to get this out of your system. Whatever it is that's bothering you about each other, you need to get it out of your system. And let's have a talk. Let's discuss what it is so that we can create more harmony in the workplace and move on from there. So that's another example of getting something out of your system. And I think as that's a great example, Krista, uh, that that kind of leads us into like a second idiom around this, which is to find common ground. Now, I don't know the exact disagreement between your employees, but maybe they were disagreeing strongly about something to the point where they couldn't see any way to agree. It's just, nope, I think this, you think this, that's it, right? And they were just getting mad and mad. Well, what you need is to find common ground. In other words, literally like a mental piece of dirt <laughs> on which you both feel comfortable standing without fighting. So what you look for is those issues or those ideas that you can agree upon. That's your common ground. So I don't know, again, what you went through with your employees. That's too bad, Krista, but I hope they found common ground. Do you have another example? They did find common ground, Bill, and that is a great, great. way to explain that. They agreed on the social media aspects, they agreed on some of the marketing techniques we were using, but they disagreed on other areas. And because they had that common ground of agreeing on a lot of the different aspects of the business, we were able to get past it and they found common ground. So that is a way that you can use that in the workplace to create harmony amongst your employees to find common ground. Fantastic. And, you know, this makes me think probably they had to spend some time thinking about the other person's ideas, which leads us into a third idiom that we had today, Krista. So what's that one? To wrap your head around something. So it doesn't mean exactly to wrap your head, but to... Yeah, it's not a towel. It's not yeah. a towel. <laughs> <laughs> it means to basically understand a complex idea or a complicated concept. To wrap your head around something means exactly that. Um, I'm thinking about that particular situation and they had to wrap their heads around the other person's point of view. So they had to think about it, as Bill was saying, consider it from different angles and wrap their head around another person's point of view. 
What do you think about that, Bill? Can you come up with another example? I'll just come up with an example, really just from my personal life. You know, we're talking about this one in the context of work, but uh, this one is just as easily used in a personal life. You know, my personal life, if, if my wife or my kids or my friends come to me and present some idea, like, I don't know, it can be something as simple as, hey, let's go away for the weekend, right? Let's take a quick trip. And I'm in the middle of a busy week. And it's like, oh, I, I, I have to think about whether I want to travel this weekend. Give me some time to wrap my head around it, right? Mm -hmm. I got this brand new idea, but I want to think about it, take my brain, go around it and absorb it, right? Mm -hmm. I need that time. So mm -hmm. you can do this in personal life, in work life. This one to me is useful just about anywhere. And Bill, did you get on board with that idea to go for a <laughs> mini vacation, a little travel trip? And moving on to our fourth and final idiom for today. That was a perfect transition, Krista. Yes, to get on board with or to be on board with. So both of these. Generally speaking, on board with means that you just agree. It's that simple. You agree. And it, it kind of comes from boats, I think. Like if you're on the boat with somebody, you are on board with, you are on the deck. If you're not on board, you're on a totally different boat. You're not even dealing with these people. So to get on board means to come to agree with someone. To be on board is to agree with someone. And you know what? Regarding traveling this weekend, I think I'm still wrapping my head around it. <laughs> okay, well, I know you had a recent 4th of July trip, so I'm... I'm sure that since that did happen, you were able to get on board with your family and agree to do it because you did in fact go on your trip. So you got on board with their idea to travel for this 4th of July weekend and have a little celebration. Absolutely, I was on board with that trip. And, and again, you can see how this one can be used in personal life, but also work life. So picture mm -hmm. you're in a meeting with a group of people, someone has presented their idea and they look around the room and they say, well, what does everyone think? And you could just say, I'm on board. That means mm -hmm. I agree with it, I'm on the same ship, let's start sailing. Uh, th this is again, like I said, a really useful one, I think, in a lot of different contexts. Mm -hmm. And you can see where it would help to create harmony amongst the employees in the, in the work environment. Because if you're on board with an idea, then you're all in agreement and you can move forward from there. So, well, please remember to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to get more of these particular idioms in the workplace and beyond. Um, do you want to do our little contest today, Bill? Sure, let's try it. The story contest, right? Where we try to use these uh, in a quickly made up little story, improvised little story. Uh, and then you, the viewers, decide which one you liked better, right? In the comments. So do you want to go first, Krista, or should I? Um, I'll, I'll give it a whirl. I'll give it a whirl. I'll go for it. Let me go first. All right. So there were, there was an, a business meeting and there was some conflict and, um, the, the employee said, you know what, this is just a really bad idea. And let me tell you why I need to get something out of my system. So the employee goes and explains, you know, I think this is a really bad idea because we're going to lose customers or we're going to upset people or whatever the problem may be. So he got it out of his system. And then as a result of that communication, he 
he was able to find some common ground with his coworkers. And they said, yeah, you know, I think you're right. We could upset some people with this idea. Let's think about it again a little bit more. And we can, and they had found some common ground. And they did this because they were able to wrap their head around the idea that maybe they would upset some people and maybe they would lose some customers. So they they thought about it and they were able to wrap their head around this person's idea. And so as a result, they were all on board with the new method of communication they were gonna use. They were on board with um, making that change so that they didn't lose customers and didn't upset their clients. So that is my story. That's my little story. Now to you, Bill, um, help us with your examples. Good, good, good story. Good story. Um, So for me, I'm thinking if you have been following the business news at all, supply chains are disrupted all over the world, right? People are having difficulty getting stuff and it's causing shortages and all these kinds of things. So if you're say running a factory and you can't get the stuff to build things, you might be getting really angry, right? What is going on here? Why can't I get my stuff? I wanna run my factory. And you talk to the person who's supposed to get your stuff, right? And you say, where is my stuff? I've been waiting to get my stuff and I don't understand what's going on with all of this. I see the headlines, I know, but I don't get it. So your your supply person might look at you and say, do you feel better? Did you get everything out of your system? So (laughs) let me help you wrap your mind around how difficult things are in the supply chain world right now. Uh, Perhaps we can find some common ground where you get enough things to do what you need to do. I hope you'll get on board with my plan. If we can do this, everything will be okay. What do you think? I think that was an excellent story. (laughs) Using some very um, interesting and current events that are taking place in the business environment. That supply chain problem has everybody needing to wrap their head around what that means for their businesses. So, all right. Well, remember to vote in the comments below for your favorite story. And if you win our little contest, uh, you know, about writing your own um, idiom that can be used in the workplace, then I will give you a free half hour English session with me so you can work on polishing some of these idioms and phrases. And I am part of Ulango, which is I'm the founder of the business. And I will be happy to give you your free lesson just for coming up with uh, the best work idiom that you can think of. So, and don't forget to vote for your favorite if it was Bill or me, um, and we'll be seeing who wins that contest, right, Bill? That's right. So yeah, two, two things. There's the contest between the stories and your favorite idiom that you might already know about harmony and democracy in the workplace. And it's that second one for other idioms that take advantage. If you win that one, if we like yours the best, you get that special offer uh, from Krista. So that's a great one. And, And for my part, I would appreciate it very much if you would subscribe to my newsletter on these issues of idioms and slang words and sayings. That's winningenglish.substack.com. So please give that a look and uh, I hope you'll sign up to that. So Krista, we'll be revisiting this, right? In future videos. Yes, yes. We will have other aspects of the democratic leadership style that 
uh, we'll be providing idioms for you on those different aspects. And it'll be a nice little series uh, to come. So we have something to look forward to. So we will see you next week for the next episode on our little business English series uh, for the best minutes of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. See you next time.